Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. We're looking at Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia is now experiencing this insane flash flooding that we've been seeing all over the world over the last couple of weeks and this year. But it's been really intense for some reason the last few weeks. Uh, this is Clark Atlanta University. And these are the dorms. And you can see these people <laughs> struggling with this flood water that's uh, flooding their living area. So um have a few updates when it comes to disasters that we're going to go over and some other interesting news. There's actually a lot of different things to talk about. We're going to be talking about Jimmy Carter. There's an update on him. Remember, he's the same age uh, as President Nelson, or at least he will be pretty soon. Uh, they were born around the same time. Uh, in the, at the end of the video, we're going to be talking about the Antichrist, meaning... Uh, a, a one person, big, big bad guy antichrist that has to appear before the second coming, or at least that's what some people assume. And it's not our doctrine. I'm going to go over all the different things. I've done this many different times, but I'm doing this little kind of like series right now where we're going through all the different misconceptions that I have on my spreadsheet. And so stay tuned for that. Okay. So first let's go ahead and do an update on the flood the earth challenge where we're sharing the book of Mormon with as many people as possible. We're at 6,542 copies that have been shared so far. I haven't updated this since the last time that I gave you an update, but that's where we're at and things are looking pretty good. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to, or if you haven't already, uh, I would encourage you to join the challenge. We're at 689 trying to get to 700. That's the next milestone. And uh, just good job, everybody. Okay. And then also, I want to call to your attention, in case you didn't know, uh, today at sundown, Rosh Hashanah is going to begin. Rosh Hashanah is also known as the Feast of Trumpets. It's the day that Joseph Smith received the gold plates uh, from the angel Moroni on the Hebrew calendar, of course. And uh, this is when the Jews change uh, the year. Like this is the Jewish new year, one of four, but this is the one that we would typically think of as a new year. We're going into the year 5784. Uh, this will initiate the 10 days of awe. So the two high holidays are Rosh Hashanah, and then it culminates in Yom Kippur 10 days later, which is the holiest day of the year in Judaism. It's also known as the day of atonement. Today is the day in Judaism where they say that for the year, your name is either written in the book of life or the book of death. And then you're, if you're kind of in the middle, you have 10 days to get it uh, in the book of life. Because today it's written in the book. And then on Yom Kippur, the day of, day of atonement, it is sealed. So this is a really important time uh, for Jews. And... Um, you know, this is essentially the first of the fall feasts. Uh, in fact, I might as well pull this up really quick. Let's go to the feasts. Uh, generally, it's recognized that there's kind of seven main feasts or holidays or whatever you want to call them. Uh, in the spring, we have uh, the Feast of Passover, uh, which is really the, the Passover Seder meal that they eat on the first day. And then the entire week is known as the first, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where you're not supposed to eat anything that has leaven. And then uh, First Fruits, uh, <clears throat> the way that it's observed now, it's on the second day of Pesach uh, in Judaism. But in the time of Christ, based on what I've studied, uh, it was actually the first Sunday after the beginning of Pesach. So it wasn't always the, the second day of Pesach, but now that's how they celebrate it. So you have those three that are all kind of like part of the same holiday, really. The Passover Seder, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the entire week, and then the Feast of First Fruits, otherwise known as Bikurim. And then uh, First Fruits initiates the uh, Omer count. Uh, so 50 days after this, you have Pentecost. That's why it's called Pentecost. Uh, it's also known as Shavuot in Hebrew or the Feast of Weeks. So 50 days after Bikurim, uh, that's when you have that. And that's usually in late spring, early summer. And then in the fall, we have the fall feast. We just talked about Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. And then after Yom Kippur, 
you have Sukkot, which is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as the Feast of Booths. All right, so Rosh Hashanah, that's where we're at right now. And I have a spreadsheet where I'm keeping track of um, the Shemitah years. So I kind of, uh, I've updated this column right here, column E for Shemitah years, where in, in uh, Judaism, they have this concept that there's these like weeks of years. So each year is like a day. So in a Shemitah year, it's, a, it's the Sabbath. It's a Sabbath year. They let the, the land rest, and there's other things that they do. Um, what we were just in, and what's ending today, is the Sunday of years. We were looking at uh, this Hebrew year because that could be a year when the Lord chooses to come because it would emphasize the fact that uh, he was resurrected on a Sunday and that he is the Messiah. But that's going to end uh, today. And we're not going to see that again for another seven years. Uh, the next Sunday of years is going to be 2030. Uh, and when I say 2030, uh, <clears throat> the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar don't line up exactly, of course, because our calendar is a solar calendar. Their, ca their calendar is a lunar calendar. So essentially, the new year for them usually starts September or October. And then most of that year uh, falls the next uh, year of our years, the Gregorian calendar, if that makes sense. So in other words, most of this Hebrew year fell in 2023, and then uh, it actually started in 2022, right? Okay. So <clears throat> um, it's it's been an interesting year as far as this spreadsheet goes, because it was the Sunday of years. Uh, we had Palm Sunday, uh, which coincided with the Sunday sessions of general conference. So that's an interesting, that inter interesting thing that happened. And then this year, Passover started on the 6th of April. So just some interesting things to take note. And I've tried to do the best that I can uh, for all the years going back and going forward. I still have a lot more work to do to fill this out. But let me just explain a couple more things on here. You'll notice this uh, dark green line right here. What this means is that first fruits on the Hebrew calendar and Easter on our calendar uh, were on the same day in 2022. They were not on the same day in 2023. And uh, you can you can see, you know, it, it it happens from time to time. It's somewhat frequent. It's not like it's really rare. Uh, there are times that you come across, like between 1999 and 2011, where First fruits and Easter did not share the same day for that entire stretch of time. So uh, whenever it does, I highlight it in green. But then I also have this column D for whenever uh, Pesach 1 is on a Saturday. Because that's what it was like during the last week of Christ's life, his last year. Uh, at that time, Pesach 1 fell on a Saturday. And then Pesach 2 was on uh, was on Sunday, and it also happened to be first fruits in that year. Okay, <clears throat> so and remember that the way that their days work is that <clears throat> excuse me, Pesach one really would have started uh, on Friday or yeah on Friday at sundown, um, but then most of it would have taken up Saturday. Okay, and then Sunday is the day that. Uh, was first fruits on the Hebrew calendar, and that's when we started. We basically changed it from think of it, thinking of it as first fruits, uh, as far as like taking us the first uh, uh, harvest offering to the temple, and we shift the focus from that to Christ and His resurrection. <clears throat> so on the Western calendar, uh, they anyway. I'm not going to get into all that. Okay, so anyway. Not all years uh, does Pesach 1 or Passover Day 1 start on a Saturday. And so we're not going to see that again, actually, until 2029. Okay. And it just so happens that in that year, 2029, both First Fruits and Easter are, are going to be on the same day. So uh, we got that. Uh, we're, it's going to be a while before we see anything like we did last year in 2022. Okay. 
so that's where we're at. We're going from the Sunday of years uh, into the Monday of years. That's where we're at on the Hebrew calendar, just so you know. Um, now, I got an email from Greg Brown, <clears throat> subject line, Jimmy Carter's 99th birthday gift will be a global tribute. Hey, Jared, it is interesting that Jimmy Carter's 99th birthday is October 1st, General Conference. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, if you're new to the channel, and I'm sorry to everybody else, uh, we've covered this a billion times, but I think it's worth repeating. Let's go to my timeline, second coming. So there's been this weird thing that's that's been going on for the last uh, year or so. You might remember that last year on September 9th, uh, President Nelson turned 98. And that was the birthday that made him uh, the longest living apostle or prophet of this dispensation right here. Okay. So that, that was a big milestone in our church. We now have the oldest prophet or apostle of this dispensation as we're nearing the second coming. This is something that we haven't seen before as far as the prophet's age is concerned. And the day before that, Queen Elizabeth II passed away at age 96. And she was the longest reigning British monarch and the second longest reigning sovereign worldwide behind French King Louis XIV. So that's kind of odd. You know, the UK, it's a, it's a power in the world, and it has been, and it was, a, it was an empire. So it's a very important and prominent nation. And you had, you know, even though she's not the prime minister, she, she still represents power. And, and that family does have a lot of power and a lot of wealth. You know, so this symbol of the United Kingdom uh, passes away the day before President Nelson breaks this record of becoming the longest living apostle or, or prophet. Well, a couple weeks before that, Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, the longest living leader of the Soviet Union, died at the age of 91. And I don't need to tell you that the Soviet Union was kind of a big deal in the 20th century. Uh, there, was a, there was something, a little thing called the Cold War that almost destroyed the entire world. So, we have the UK, we have the Soviet Union. Uh, a, f a couple, like about a month before that, Shinzo Abe was assassinated at age 67, Japan's longest serving prime minister. Japan was also kind of a big deal uh, during World War II. So we have Japan, Soviet Union, United Kingdom. And then after President Nelson's birthday, we had... Uh, Jiang Zemin that passed away at age 96, the longest living president of China and leader of the, Commun the Chinese Communist Party. So China, as you know, right now is kind of a big deal. It's kind of, kind of one of the biggest um, adversaries for the United States and for the West. And then a couple weeks after that, Abigail Kawanakaoa, uh, the la known as the last Hawaiian princess, passed away at age 96. So that's kind of weird. And then a few weeks after that, uh, the king of soccer passed away age uh, 82, Pele. Uh, and you might be like, well, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's soccer. You guys, the second coming represents the end of this world in this old system, whether it's religion uh, in some ways um, whether it's nations, empires, or whether it's entertainment, you know. So even though he wasn't an actual king, the fact that he had the title king of soccer, you know, that's that was a big deal for a lot of people, you know, soccer fans and people that liked him. Uh, a couple days after he died, Pope Emeritus Benedict passed away at the age of 95, and he was the longest living pope of all time. On the last day of the year, as though he's not permitted to see the next year. I don't know. It's weird. But what's even weirder, um, a few weeks after that, I'm going to skip these two for right now. Lucille Randon, Lucille Randon passes away from France. 118 years, 340 days, the longest living nun of all time. So the longest living pope and the longest living nun died within a couple weeks of each other. 
Then we had the last king of Greece, Constantine II, passing away at age 82. He spent most of his time in exile, but he was technically the last king of Greece. Uh, Lisa Marie Presley passed away at age 54, the princess of rock, because her father Elvis was the king of rock. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have. And then that brings us to Jimmy Carter of the United States. So we've talked about all these kind of like superpowers, prominent nations, <clears throat> powerful churches. And now we have the United States with Jimmy Carter. And uh, earlier this year, on the 18th of February, he entered hospice care at age 98. And that brings us to Greg's email. So he gave me um, a link to this uh, People article. Carter Center prepares the ultimate gift involving you for Jimmy Carter's monumental 99th birthday. Okay, earlier this year, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier this year, the Carter family hadn't foreseen getting to celebrate President Jimmy Carter's 99th birthday alongside him, according to his grandson, Jason Carter. And you and I had spoken about this. Um, I asked people to put in the comments, like, did they think that he had days left, weeks left, months left? Well, the answer as of right now is months. He had months. And who knows? Who knows how long he'll go? But it looks like his family wasn't expecting that. But after seven months in hospice care, the 39th president has nearly arrived at the milestone occasion and wheels are in motion to ensure that it's the most meaningful birthday yet. Quote, these last several months have been surprising for us all, says Jason, chairman of the Carter Center. Uh, continuing, he says, but it but it's been a real blessing, end quote. One of those blessings, he tells people, has been watching President Carter receive countless messages of love and admiration since revealing his decision to terminate medical interve medical intervention in February. So he, he's like, he's resigned. He's ready to just go. Recognizing the unique opportunity that Jason's grandparents ha have had to watch their legacy take form, his grandmother, 96-year-old Rosalyn Carter, was diagnosed with dementia in May and has received her own outpouring of support, helping inspire the Carter Center's vision for the former president's birthday, which falls on Sunday, October 1st. So uh, we got a lot of interesting things happening and coinciding with this general conference. One, we have the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot. That's going to be on the first day of conference. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Hold on. What? Yeah, October. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so I'm looking at September 30th. That's going to be the Saturday sessions of General Conference. So on that Saturday, it's going to be the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, we look. I did an interesting video, and I hope that you watch it, where the day before, there's this Christian holiday uh, celebrated by the Catholic, Lutheran, and Anglican churches, and uh, supposedly some in the East, too, um, called Michaelmas or the Feast of Michael the Archangel and all angels. And when it refers to all angels, uh, it's referring also to Gabriel, which we know is Noah, and Raphael, which we think is Enoch, or at least Bruce R. McConkie has said as much. So Adam, Noah, and Enoch. Uh, there's this feast that, of course, they don't view those archangels that way, but we do. And uh, that, that takes place on the 29th of September. And it commemorates uh, uh, when this certain basilica in Rome was dedicated on the 30th. So <clears throat> that dedication, uh, the anniversary of it, is going to be on the first day of conference. So a lot of a lot of kind of weird things happening this year with general conference. Um, trying to think if there was anything else. It's so hard to just remember all of it, but. I think that's pretty much it. If I forgot something, put it in the comments below. <clears throat> if I forgot about the timing of this uh, general conference. It's also kind of a rare general conference because it's not very often that general conference um, begins in a separate month, you know, where it straddles two months like it does this year. So that's kind of weird too, which means that on the Gregorian calendar, it shares the same month as Rosh Hashanah, 
Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's kind of weird. Okay, so thank you, Greg, for pointing that out. And uh, he, you know, Jimmy Carter might be one to keep an eye on because if this whole idea is right, that these pe people are passing away before President Nelson because they represent their countries and, pres and President Nelson represents the church, the message in that is that the church is going to go on. It's, it's not going to end like these, these nations of the world are. Does that make sense? And so Jimmy Carter representing the United States, uh, if he passes away, he that might be like the final uh, person in this series of people that represent their countries and churches and sports and music and stuff like that. You may think it's silly, but I don't think it is. I think it's very, very unlikely because we're going to have to wait a long time uh, to have another longest living um, or longest reigning British monarch and longest living leader of China. Uh, we're never again going to have another longest living leader of the Soviet Union. That was it. There's not going to be another one of those. And we're not going to have another <clears throat> king of Greece unless they like somehow reinstate the monarchy. So this is a very rare thing to happen at this time. It's very rare. It's very unusual. <clears throat> Sorry about the coughing. I'm, I'm trying. I'm taking my medication. Okay. Now, let's move on to Libya. I think I only mentioned this in the members only video. I don't think I've mentioned this on the main channel. Um, and maybe you already, you've already seen this. But uh, So as of right now, so the last time that we looked at it, let me zoom in. The last time that we looked at it, um, the death toll in Libya was 6,000. Now... It's 11,300. So this is just going way, 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 way up. And remember, um, they were thinking that it could reach somewhere between 18 and 20,000. So hopefully that's not the case. Uh, please send prayers, uh, aid them if you can. But... It's not looking very good at all. So 11,300 as of today. Okay. And then I got this email from Crystal, uh, Capital Flooded. And so I went to the link. And I'm actually going to a different article that have, has just a little bit more information. <clears throat> so now we're looking at Atlanta, Georgia. Torrential downpour during severe th storm... Th <laughs> Torrential downpour during severe storm floods during severe storm floods downtown Atlanta, Clark Atlanta University. And that's what we were just looking at on X at the beginning of this video. Atlanta, more than two inches of rain fell in as little as an hour, flooding portions of downtown Atlanta, the Atlanta University Center, and surrounding areas. The Fox 5 storm team says... It was about three hours worth of rain dumped on the city in just a matter of minutes. This is starting to become a, a, a common thing. And I think this is like a <clears throat> this is like a common trait between all these different flooding events is that and, and obviously what would be causing them in the first place is that you have large amounts of rain that are falling within a very narrow window of time. And therefore, you have flash floods. So in this case, three hours worth within just a few minutes. <clears throat> Some areas of Atlanta easily, easily had five feet of water rushing through streets and low-lying areas from a near stationary thunderstorm. The flash flooding left cars flooded, fences damaged, and buildings waterlogged. Uh, before we get to the videos. I just want to hop over to the Atlanta journal constitution and um, they have like a, a live blog that's going on and you can see some of the pictures here. Photo updates from downtown Atlanta early Friday. And there you go. You got cars um, that were swept away or moved uh, from their original position. And in this case, they're covered with uh, debris of some kind. Some more. 
a really big tree that was toppled. And f- for this reason, I want to get rid of the tree in our backyard. <laughs> The guy before us, he had like a bunch of trees on the property and it's cool, but like, I'm worried about this. As time goes on, weather gets more severe. I really don't want a tree falling on my house. And that, I don't know, that might be something that you'd want to consider for yourself. Anyway, so we got that one new update. What's that? Uh, Nothing. Okay. Now let's go to X. Let's look at some of these videos. So here we are again at Clark Atlanta. Uh, university. I looked up Clark University. I think it's based out of Massachusetts, but um, I don't. That this just this is crazy. That's just such a crazy scene. All right, let's move on. Clark University campus. You see a car that's almost entirely submerged, right here. Not only submerged, but it's like tipping down. It's like the the back. Uh, area the trunk is like floating or something i don't know if there's this is like a there's like a hill right here that we just can't see like this is like a ditch or something i don't know uh jonathan fl says flash flood in atlanta washes cars from parking lot so you see a fedex truck and then another car Mark Aram says, today on the show, Atlanta floods, uh, the latest on, okay, so it's just advertising his thing or whatever, but you can see this car that's uh, been taken by the, the flooding through this fence and on top of this fence. Here's that. Billy Heath the third vehicle submerged on at Northside Drive Northwest and MLK Drive southwest in atlanta uh this this witness says the cars got swept downhill by fast moving flash flood water you guys this is just another i don't know if i already said this video this is a capital city this is the capital of of the state of georgia so not only is it another flash flooding event but um it's a capital city I'm going to zoom. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, get rid of a bad word there. This person says it looked like a hurricane hit Clark Atlanta. Yeah, looks like a disaster went through that street. Okay. Life come sat you fat. Oh, life comes at you fast. The city of Atlanta is flooding looks like a river right now. <clears throat> Let me know if you're from Atlanta or if you're in that area. Were you affected by these floods? Did you see them firsthand? Put it in the comments below. Doesn't look like that's passable. Doesn't well, I guess you could drive through that, but it's like really muddy. Um again, if you ever come across any stories of anything like this feel free to send it to me ideally in an email because it's easier for me to keep on top of emails uh not so much in the comments but you can and uh not so much through social media it's it's much harder for me to keep on top of social media like direct messages on instagram or facebook all right um here's some more here's some more Oh, th- oh, this guy's on his uh on top of his car. That's one of the that's one of the hallmarks of uh <clears throat> these flash flooding events is people on top of cars. We've seen it in Spain, we've seen it in Brazil, now we're seeing it in Atlanta. And I'm sure there's been a few others. It- it's starting to get hard to keep track of all these different locations. That's why I have my Google Earth uh and my spreadsheets, which we're gonna look at in just a minute. And then um <clears throat> I'm just sharing this with you with a grain of salt. Uh, I trust this account, Falcoholic. I think they do a good job, but supposedly there's more flooding uh, in Spain. This is like the third instance. So the first one, in fact, let's go to the map. All right, so here you have Atlanta, flash flooding, Louisiana. Uh, and by the way, this I only have this month checked. This is all September. Louisiana has had its largest wildfire 
in state history. We had this flooding up here in Le Minster, Le Monster, Le Minster, Massachusetts. Um, and then over here, right, we have the Moroccan earthquake. Uh, today, it seems that the death toll is still just a little under 3,000. Okay, in Spain, first, from what I have recorded, we have uh, the flooding at the beginning of the month on the 3rd in Madrid and Toledo. And then in the east, uh, southern France, Castellón and Molina de Segura, of uh, I think it's of Murcia. Um, uh, these have all seen that same type of flooding. And now, according to X and a, a few accounts, they're saying that there's even more flooding in Madrid and other areas but I haven't been able to confirm it. So I, you know, I kind of believe them. Uh, this one, they're saying that this is in Catalonia in Spain and Catalonia is over here. Um, the capital city is uh, Barcelona, but it's this uh, province right here. This is actually where I started my mission. I started in uh, Lleida and the Castilian name is Lerida, but Catalan, it's Lleida. So they're saying flooding here, flooding over here, which that's a really, that's a really large area. So I, I just, I don't know about that. Uh, <clears throat> this is in Malaga. Malaga is down here. So I don't know if, if these videos are right, then the, almost like the entirety of Spain has been hit over the last 24 hours, but there's no news stories to really confirm it. Here we are again in Catalonia. Catalonia is the English, but Catalonia is Catalan. Madrid. So I don't want to dwell too much on this just because I can't verify it, but there are a lot of videos claiming that this is going on. So maybe there just hasn't been time for the news stories to come out. Um, Spain. Wow, look at that. Okay, so anyway, if I can verify it, then we'll come back and we'll watch these videos again, but just have that on your radar. Um, yeah, and then moving on, we had Storm Daniel hit Greece, Turkey, Bulgaria, Tunisia, and obviously Libya, where we're seeing the main effects of that. Uh, <clears throat> Brazil, again, we had the state of Rio Grande do Sul. That's been hit hard by flash flooding. And then we have China. Hong Kong seeing uh, the wor the heaviest rainfall in 140 years, which is since records began, from Fuzhou down to Bobai, and then including Hong Kong. And I think that's pretty, mi pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have, there was a, an event that took place in Phoenix, a really strong storm. I covered that on the members only portion of my channel. You can subscribe to that, but I did put it on my spreadsheet, but uh, it caused planes to flip over at a, an airport in Mesa. There were a lot of downed cactuses and just really intense scenes. So that took place also this week. Okay. That is just September. That is just September, and we're, we're as of today, we're only halfway through. Okay, now let's talk about the Antichrist. Uh, this is something that you'll come across when you start trying to study the Second Coming, because inevitably, when you do searches on the internet, uh, you're going to come across um, evangelical Christians' concept of the Antichrist. They believe that there has to be a one-person Antichrist really powerful that's going to from from the gist of what i understand of their theory is that he's going to build the third temple in jerusalem and then he's going to be in it and pretend to be christ or or pretend to be god or just like a you know whatever a spiritual leader and he's going to be the one that implements the mark of the beast and get everybody get everybody uh you know, barcoded or microchipped or whatever, and all sorts of horrible things. And uh, there are Latter-day Saints that have taken this as their own theology, even though our church does not teach that whatsoever. 
and I'm about to show you. So if you go to the Bible dictionary, uh, there's an entry for Antichrist, and it defines what the church believes about this term. A word used by John to describe to describe one who would assume the guise of Christ, but in reality would be opposed to Christ. In a broader sense, it is anyone or anything that counterfeits the true gospel or plan of salvation, and that openly or secretly is set up in opposition to Christ. The great Antichrist is Lucifer, but he has many assistants, both as spirit beings and as mortals. So, it's a broad term. It applies to anyone that opposes Christ and his doctrine. Um, and the great Antichrist is Satan himself. But there's more. Before I get into the quotes, um, <clears throat> let's read some of the key scriptures uh, that people point to to show that there's evidence of a one-person Antichrist that has to be revealed before the second coming can happen. So 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, in that, a man, in that, in that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So people will read this and believe that this is talking about the Antichrist. Uh, not understanding, uh, hopefully not Latter-day Saints, but not understanding that this is a scripture that has to do with the great apostasy that took place. A concept and a doctrine unique to our church, something that other Christian churches would not understand in the same way that we do. Okay, so the man of sin has to be revealed. And by the way, he was, and I have a quote from, uh, this is at the time of Joseph Smith, that the man of sin was revealed and they recorded it. And then verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. And so from this, you have the, the, the idea, the theories that the third temple is going to be built in Jerusalem and the man of sin is going to sit in the temple and act as though he is God. All right, and then the other... Um, well, one of the other key scriptures, Revelation 16, and this comes up a few times in Revelation chapter 16, 19, and 20. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and, the, and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And so I suppose the idea goes that because it says the false prophet singular, that this is referring to a great false prophet, and therefore it must be the Antichrist. Not that it's referring to just a general concept of false prophets and the mouth of the beast being the general concept of just this worldly system, and then the dragon representing Satan. Anyway, and then the last one, I'm not going to go over it because this is a whole video unto itself, and I've actually made a few videos about it. You have this idea of the 70 weeks of Daniel, which in reality is a prophecy of the restoration of Israel or of Judah from the time of the captivity in Babylon until the time of Christ. And that's it. And then shortly after the time of Christ. But there are people that take that last period and bring it all the way back 2,000 years afterwards and say that this is something that's going to happen in the last days, and then they interpret what happens in there as being the Antichrist. I'm not going to go over that entire thing. Just watch this video. The 70 weeks of Daniel clearly explained. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the quotes. So this is on my spreadsheet called Quotes, Common Misconceptions. The misconception is the Antichrist still has to be revealed. Okay, so... This first one, uh, this is recorded by John Whitmer, uh, one of the eight witnesses of the Book of Mormon and church historian. You can find this in the Joseph Smith papers. He says, Joseph Smith Jr. prophesied the day previous that the man of sin should be revealed. Ah, so Joseph Smith, okay, the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Joseph Smith prophesied 
the day previous that the man of sin should be revealed. While the Lord poured out his spirit upon his servants, the devil took occasion and make known his power. He bound Harvey Whitlock and John Murdoch so that he could not speak and others were affected. But the Lord showed to Joseph, the seer, the design of this thing. <clears throat> and he commanded the devil in the name of Christ. And he departed to our, our joy and comfort. Okay. So the man of sin <clears throat> is Satan, just like it says in the Bible dictionary, but there's more. In History of the Church, Volume 1, page 175, it says, On the third... Now, by the way, I copied and pasted this directly from the source. So if there's misspellings or whatever, it's because that's how it's recorded in, in these documents and books. On the 3rd of June, the elders from the various parts of the country uh, where, they were lab- where they were laboring came in and the conference before appointed convened in Kirtland, and the Lord displayed his power to the most perfect satisf- satisfaction of the saints. The man of sin was revealed, and the authority of the Melchizedek priesthood uh, was manifested and conferred, conferred for the first time upon several of the elders. And maybe that's why Satan was there, because it's the first time that the Melchizedek priesthood is going out uh, to others other than the prophet. So this is an event that took place and they called it the revealing of the, the, the revealing of the man of sin. Okay. Now in the, <clears throat> in the Latter-day Saints millennial star publication that was put out in uh, the UK. <clears throat> Gosh, damn it. And I'm sorry, I, I could not for the life of me find who actually wrote this article. So that's unfortunate it doesn't invalidate it because just like the ensign, just like the new era, just like any church publication, there, you're not going to have something that goes in there that's going to go against church doctrine. Okay, but this is can be this can be found volume fifteen, page two seventy four. This is talking about the Antichrist. Don't tell me about popes and prelates sitting in the temple of God as God. One far greater than any pope or prelate is soon to be revealed. And he will claim to be worshipped as God. Now remember that this is no modern wicked man that is going to claim divine honors. No, it is that old serpent, the devil. He it is that will head the opposition against God and his Christ. And he, the son of perdition, it is that will be allowed a much longer chain than heretofore. And such will be the greatness of his power that it will seem to many that he is entirely loose. He will be so far unshackled and unchained that his power will deceive all the nations, even the world, and the elect will barely escape the power of his sorceries, enchantments, and miracles. It is not to be expected that Satan will carry on his great warfare against Christ and his saints by means of any one religion exclusively. It is not the papal or Protestant religion alone that you need ha- that you have need to fear. But the great and abominable church, which you should expect to encounter, is Antichrist. And that that is uh, like the one entity other than other than Satan that we would say is the great Antichrist power, the great and abominable church, a concept that we learn about in the Book of Mormon and, it, and is referred to many times in the Book of Mormon. OK, the next one is from. Uh, Joseph Fielding Smith in Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 3, pages 641 to 642. Power of Satan and Government of World. The United States is not the kingdom of God. Neither is England, Germany, or France. Take all the nations put together. They do not constitute the kingdom of God, but are only man-made worldly governments. Notwithstanding, the Father raised up righteous men and directed them in, in the framing of this government and in giving the people the Constitution of the United States, it is not the government of God. Like all the rest, it is a man-made, it is a man-made government, it will not have, and we will not have the government of God until Christ comes to reign. And when he comes, he is going to be king of kings. He is going to take his rightful place. 
Satan, Satan now has, okay, Satan has control now. No matter where you look, he has control, even in our own land. He is guiding the governments as far as the Lord will permit him. That is why there is so much strife, turmoil, and confusion all over the earth. One mastermind is governing the nations. It is not the president of the United States. It is not Hitler. It is not Mussolini. It is not the king or government of England or of any other land. It is Satan himself. World, tur- world turmoil by Satan. What does the Lord say in the first section of the Doctrine and Covenants? The hour is not yet. This was over 100 years ago, uh, but is nigh at hand when peace will be taken from the earth and the devil shall have power over his own dominion. Well, Satan, Satan certainly has dominion over his own, for his is the power of confusion, strife, bitterness, and class distinction. He is the power of delusion and not one of peace and righteousness. Where can righteousness be found in the world? In Europe, in Asia, in the United States? I say unto you, you are not going to have peace in the United Sto- in the United States or anywhere in the world until the Prince of Peace comes to bring it. Men have taken the law in their own hands, having defied law and order. When strikes are settled in one place, they will break out in another. Why? Because Satan has power over his dominions or over his own dominions, and even among our legislatures. Uh, no, sorry, legislators and the men sworn to preserve the Constitution. We find those who encourage this lawlessness and lend to it their support. This condition does not come out of the kingdom of God. These things will increase until the prophecies will all be fulfilled, and eventually the earth will be cleansed, and Christ will come as King of Kings. All right, Legrand Richards. Uh, This is the October 1963 General Conference, a talk called The Church, The Most Important Thing. Okay, he says, What became of the church and kingdom of God after the Savior and his apostles were put to death? The Apostle Paul warned the brethren of his day not to look for the coming of Christ until there should be a falling away first. Now, these are Paul's words. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that... Ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, not by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1-3 through Could a more positive statement be made that there would be a falling away before men took, before men look for the coming of Christ? How universal uh, was this apostate condition to be? When the Apostle John was banished upon the Isle of Patmos, the the angel of the Lord showed unto him all things from the war in heaven uh, when Satan was cast out with a third of the hosts of heaven until the final winding up scenes when we would have a new heaven and a new earth for all former things would have passed away. And the angel said, come up hither and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And the angel showed John the power that Satan would have in the world and said, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, the members of his church, and to overcome them. And power was given given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. In light of these statements, it is clear that the Lord permitted his apostles to see the time when his church and kingdom would would not be found on the earth. But he also let them see the time when his kingdom would again be restored to the earth. After the apostle John was shown by the angel uh, the power given Satan to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, he was shown how the Lord would restore his kingdom to the earth. In this talk, he doesn't talk about a great antichrist that has to be revealed before the second coming, other than Satan himself. I, I don't know how members of the church hold on to this idea. Like they think that, I guess there's like the secret doctrines that uh, are not going to ever be talked about, uh, not in general conference, not in church manuals, not in uh, church publications of any sort, but it, that you have to secretly figure out yourself. It just, that's not how it works. 
It's not, especially when it comes to prophecy. When it comes to prophecy, and this is one of the misconceptions that we're going to come to in a later video, prophecy in the interpretation of scriptures belongs to the church and to leaders of the church, to prophets and apostles. And yet people want to take the scriptures and just run wild and go this way or that way with wild, wild theories, including the Antichrist, the one person Antichrist. And it's just, it's not our doctrine. And if you say that it's in the scriptures, what you're really saying is it's in the way that you interpret the scriptures. But no one in our church has ever interpreted it that way. This is what keeps us a church. And that's why there's many, 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 many Christian churches, because everybody takes the scriptures and interprets it their, their own way, without authority. Okay, Bruce R. McConkie, Mormon Doctrine. Um, Lucifer is the man of sin, spoken of by Paul, who was to be revealed in the last days before the second coming of our Lord. There you go, just point blank, period. He is the one of whom men shall say, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisoners? Or Harold B. Lee, 1971, um, president at that time, president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. The name of the talk is Watch That Ye May Be Ready. One of the most significant among the other signs of which the Master spoke, and about which I have often wondered, was that prior to his coming, there would be false Christs, false prophets, who would show great signs and wonders. And by the way, this particular phrase, great signs and wonders, is part of those scriptures that people use to support the idea of a one-person antichrist. In order to deceive the faithful who are looking forward to that glorious day when the master will return again to the earth. We are actually seeing this present among us today in 1971 where individuals are coming forward with claims of deity for their leaders these arch deceivers are among us and some have come in person claiming to be god right isn't that what it says it said in uh second Th thessalonians who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called god or that is worshiped so that he as god sitteth in the temple of god Showing, shewing himself that he is God. Well, President Harold B. Lee, 1971, say, says that that's happening back then, 1971. Um, and some have come in person claiming to be God, and we may well expect others to rise up to do likewise in fulfillment of the Master's declaration that false Christs and false prophets would come forth. All right, the next one, LeGrand Richards, 1972. Uh, no, we're going to skip this one. It's kind of a repetition. Let's go on to Robert D. Hales. Uh, he was at that time of the 70, but later he became an apostle. This is a, this is a devotional talk called This is the Way and There is, no, and there is None Other Way. Uh, this was at BYU in 1982. Now, to help you with this, I want to talk from the scriptures about Antichrist. That's a hard word. It may help if I give you a couple examples of what I mean. Basically, what I'm asking is this. How do you identify those around you who appear faithful but will lead you astray? How, John descri how does John describe these people? I will also use the Bible Dictionary. Antichrist was a word used by the Apostle John to describe one who assumes the guise of a Christian, but in reality is opposed to Christ. That would be including non-members as well as members of members or priesthood holders. In a broader sense, it is anyone or anything that counterfeits the true gospel or plan of salvation. Therefore, it means anyone who will prevent you from obtaining eternal life and who openly or secretly is set in opposition to Jesus Christ. The great Antichrist is Lucifer, but he has many assistants, both spirit, spirit beings and mortals. We sometimes think of Peter 
when he denied Christ, but he didn't deny him as the Savior. He merely denied his association with him because of fear of what he thought was going to happen to him with his peer group. And that's what happens with many of us. That's what happens with many of us. We are often afraid uh, when we don't know what is going to happen. And it has always puzzled me that anyone can have more fear of man than of God. We can learn from the scriptures as John recorded, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. We will have many we will okay, we will have many antichrists among us within the church. President Lee used to constantly tell us that the greatest danger to the church was internal, not external. And then here's the last one. This is from uh, Dallin H. Oaks. At the time, he was in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. This is February 25th, 2014, BYU-Idaho. The name of the talk is Witness of God. All right, he says, Prophecies of the last days foretell great opposition to inspired truth and action. Some of these prophecies concern the Antichrist, Okay, the Antichrist, and others speak of the great and abominable church. A, in Antichrist, the Apostle John uses, okay, A, Antichrist. The Apostle John uses the term Antichrist to describe one who denieth the Father and the Son. Today, those who deny the existence of God are called atheists. Some of these ridicule the faith of those who believe in what cannot be proven even as they aggressively deny a godly existence that cannot that they cannot disprove. We are prepared for such denials by God by the Book of Mormon's account of a man named Korihor. Uh, in terms reminiscent of those atheistic writings of our day, Korihor twice, uh, Korihor twice called an Antichrist. Oh, then it just stops. Okay, whatever, I get... <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know if I intentionally did that, but anyway, that's all the quotes that I have about uh, a single person antichrist. It's not our doctrine. The man of sin has been revealed. Satan is the great antichrist. He has many agents on the earth uh, that are also antichrists, but you don't have to wait for the third temple <clears throat> to be built by the Jews on the temple mount and then for some person uh, to take control and have a lot of power and then do miracles and whatever. That's not the case. It's not part of our religion. Um, and I would encourage you not to spend very much time listening to other Christians when it comes to the second coming, because they lack a lot of the, the a lot of the essential doctrine that we have in our church, like the apostasy, virtually all the scriptures that they use to support the idea of an antichrist has to do with the great apostasy. So there's a fundamental misunderstanding uh, of what those scriptures mean. And uh, they're using their own logic, their own wisdom, you know, trying to piece things together the best that they can. And I'm not saying that they're bad. They're doing the best that they can, but they don't have the fullness of the gospel. They don't, they don't have living prophets and apostles. Everything that I just read to you, comes from living prophets and apostles people that can interpret the scriptures with this with the spirit of prophecy who know what the plan is right now and how things are going to play out so okay so that's going to be it for this one uh, if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below also make sure to share it and i'll talk to you guys later